This conference will now be recorded. Hey. Go ahead. Let's go ahead and introduce ourselves because Hannah hasn't been here since a couple of you have uh, started coming. So, Hannah, you want to go first? Sure, I can go first. So, I am a moderator, but it's been a very long time since I've been here. <laughs> um, I just got super busy. So, anyway. Um, my name is Hannah and I'm from San Antonio, Texas, and I was diagnosed with MS in 2017. So it's coming up on my four year anniversary by now. And um, I have relapse and remitting. I'm on Ocrevus and those are the basic details. So I'm due for Ocrevus like in two weeks now. That's about it. I'd love to hear about you, everybody else here too. Let's go for Tim next. I'm going to go just go around my screen here. Tim, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim. Uh, I live in uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia. Um, I diagnosed on 19 March of this year after uh, four years of MRIs and uh, spinal taps and uh, wondering what the heck's going on. Um, I am uh, CIS and soon to be starting uh, Tech Videra. Um and I've got uh, twin girls that are turning seven on Thursday. Awesome. Tree Tree, go ahead, girl. I'm Tree Tree. I am also in San Antonio, Texas. Um, I was diagnosed last October, and I'm on the Baggio Fish. Okay, Karen, you want to go next? You want me to skip you for now? She's muted. There you go. You didn't introduce yourself as a moderator, so I'm like having a little cognitive dissonance here. Oh, like, I'm going around. Why right is she? I guess it's my turn. I'll tell you about it. What? <laughs> What? Go ahead. Because uh, I, I mean, I guess I've seen on the list that several people are moderators, but I haven't only experienced the Dan and Jennifer effect before. Dan and Jen, me and Hannah and Frank are all moderators. And then there's okay. another one. Uh, she hasn't been here for a while because she's going to grad school. So Carly, Carly. So. Okay. Wow. I had to clarify that. <laughs> I'm Karen, and I've been coming to this group since mm, the very end of February, I think, maybe beginning of March, and uh, I've been diagnosed with, and I'm still stuck on, I don't remember what CIS means, like CSI, <laughs> like whatever. Isolating syndrome. That's when you've only had, quote unquote, one flare, so they can't do multiple sclerosis because you haven't had multiple flares. No. Well, I've had no flares, and uh, I have got diagnosed with primary progressive straight up even though i've had symptoms for at least 20 years and for seven years they were ignored and called anxiety like <laughs> yes anxiety provoking to be falling all the time and not knowing why and uh, stuff like that so um yeah and i'm not on any infusions because they're not likely to help me and i'm in oakland california across the bay from san francisco where the weather is good okay robert go ahead hi i'm robert i currently live in uh, salt lake city originally from <laughs> chicago uh, uh, um, I have relapsing remitting, uh, currently on OS. I just had my um, second half of my first infusion um, two days ago, and uh, I seem to be taking pretty well to it. Uh, I don't know. Okay, my name is Kim. I live in Des Moines, Iowa. I have relapsing remitting. I was diagnosed in 2012. My symptoms started in 2001. Go ahead, Jen. And I'm Jennifer Digman, and I live in Michigan. I was diagnosed with MS in 1997, 
and I'm living with secondary progressive MS and I'm currently taking rituxan. And not last, but at least I can't talk because I'm tired, Frank. And I'm Frank Austin, and I live in Plainville, Kansas. If you take a map of the United States and stick a pen right in the middle of the 48 states, you got me. I, you, I mean, you got me. It's a voodoo doll. Uh, I was diagnosed in 1997, though I've had it for 15 years before that. Uh, secondary progressive, and I am not on any medication. I treat the symptoms. Has anyone have anything they wanted to bring to the meeting and talk about tonight that's been burning on their minds for the last two weeks? If not, I'll go. I think I've said in the past that um, heat did not exacerbate my MS, that I didn't have the, M, you know, I was wrong, guys. <laughs> I was oh, wrong. No. wrong. Well, what I think is, I'll tell you a little backstory. So, like, Tuesday last week, my husband was like, you want to go to walk to the park? It was like lunch. I'm like, yeah. And it's been really hot here, like, 80s, high 80s, and it's really humid here. I can't even, like, I'm walking. My right foot is dragging. I can't even get around the park. And I realized, yeah, I have MS. I can't even think of it because my sister's in town and I'm tired. But the MS, you know, when it's heat sensitivity, that's what I'm looking for. Um and I realized I've had it, but I hadn't been doing as well before. So when the heat sensitivity happened, I didn't notice it as much, but I had those two to three months that were amazing for me. So then it really smacked and hit me. And I'm just like, oh, wow, this is intense. And like I almost took when I was tired last Wednesday, I almost took a header down the stairs behind the, my, my back stairs down to my uh, uh, patio uh, when I was taking my dog out one more time and so the side rails like really shaky I'm like all right we gotta get that fixed now that's a priority and uh, yeah so um, and then I realized a couple months ago that a good scale for me and how I'm doing is how my reading is doing and I was like oh I can't read like it's really hard for me to read like normal books right now so I'm reading children's books so I'm reading <laughs> rereading Little House on the Prairie that I read in fifth grade 30 years ago, so I can read that. But um, yeah, um, I've been really surprised on how much the heat sensitivity has affected me because I didn't have such a, a huge, there wasn't big, a big enough difference prior, but I was doing so well for those two or three months that it really showed up. So I just want to say, guys, I was wrong. <laughs> I'll take that back. I am affected by the heat. But so what do, you, what do you mean when you say reading? What do you mean when you say reading is hard for you? Like, I have problems with the cognition. So oh, fatigue okay. and cognition are my two biggest things. So at times my reading was the worst. I couldn't read anything except internet fluff articles because my comprehension and memory was so bad I couldn't understand the second paragraph because I couldn't remember what I read in the first paragraph. Like that's how intense it was for me at one point in time. So I'm used to reading like really technical stuff and I haven't been able to do a lot of that for a long time. But when you start to read things and everything just kind of blur and you're having problems with attention, it's just like nothing's clicking, then you know that something's going on. And I love to read. I'm a big reader. So I have learned instead of like getting super upset and mourned and depressed about it, like be like, all right. Let's see how kids' books are, and then start reading. And like, okay, yeah, I really like this. And go, okay, what other books did you want to read that you haven't read in this genre? So just you got to kind of twist your point of view so you can deal with it better, or else you can go down a really dark path very quickly. Because so. I heard like sometimes visual, not sometimes, like often visual disturbance. So like that's hard for me, and I. You know, they just go, oh, well, optical neurons, you don't have that. It's like, okay, but my left eye is blurry, you know, and I can't really see. So I was wondering about that. But, um, yeah, and for me, too, but I don't know. Audio books seem to work better for me because then they work too I can for just me. listen. I like them, but sometimes it's too much. The beautiful thing about audiobooks is I can, like, hit the rewind button 15 seconds. It's like, what was that? And you can slow it down if you want to, but sometimes it's too complicated. 
Like, I don't know if you've gotten to a point, everyone's else gotten to a point where sometimes if your brain, you're really tired and you have comprehensive uh, issues, you have to put the closed captioning on and watch stuff with closed captioning. Has anyone else had to deal with that? That's like mm -hmm. a very, yeah. I remember someone like, hey, you should come over and watch this movie. I'm like, I'll watch it, but I just have to warn you, you have to put on closed captioning or I'm not going to get it. And it's not because I, I can hear beautifully, but that slow down when you get super tired in the comprehension, super slow down. It's like it's like this long delay to like what that garble, what does that mean mm -hmm. in English? So, hey, let's yeah. say hi to Elizabeth and Christy. We got a couple Hello. new people. Christy, uh, sorry, Elizabeth, Hello. go ahead and introduce yourself to the crowd. Oh, yeah. I'm Elizabeth. I've had MS 17 years and I am. Um, I'm in North Carolina preparing to go back to California. We leave June 30th. Uh, I'm going to stop off in Utah to see some family. But um, I'm there with you. I know exactly what you're talking about, Kim, when you say, like, I was just kidding. I still have heat problems. It's not heat problems, but every, well, I do have heat problems, but every time I feel good, Feeling bad doesn't make sense to me anymore, and it's just like, just what what was going on with me? Like, maybe I just wasn't trying hard enough, and then, and then I get hit with it again, and I'm like, oh yeah. And you think, after several times of that happening over and over again, that that you know, it would start to make sense, and it does makes sense but at the same time it doesn't and you have to remember yeah you know you have to remember i had an episode of dehydration because it was hot here and i i always drink fluids and I, it's like oh my god i i need flu you know i need water i need more water you know and then afterwards somebody said well you should keep gatorade at home or you know i know i have juice and it's like but then you have to remember <laughs> like you have to remember like oh wait what should I do when it's the heat? Wait, what should I do when I didn't sleep enough? That's different than what you need to do when you stress yeah, out. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually just uh, experiencing the heat related issues. I'm an outdoor mechanic and I moved to the state of Utah. Um, <laughs> it's not very good, especially when it's 100 degrees out. Um, so I've had a couple of t days already where it gets towards the end of the day and I'm really struggling and I'm realizing it's the heat. I get in the car, I turn on the AC, um, but I'm really concerned whether or not I continue to do this career. Robert, did we talk last time about cooling vests and the resources to get one? Did we talk about yeah, that we, last time? Yeah, we did. You guys, you guys uh, had recommended a couple of uh, uh, places for me to go look. Um, I never did follow up with it because I, life got in the way and just never did. Yeah, but, but now the heat's starting to bother you. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Is there I, don't any, know, I don't know if it's feasible to continue doing what I'm currently doing, you know? Uh, wearing it does help a lot. I mean, it, it works for maybe a couple hours. So maybe toward the end of the day or before you get to that, you could slap one on or you get enough uh, cooling packs that you can switch them out, but. Okay, yeah. I went on vacation just about a week ago. We went to South Carolina and I brought my um, cooling scarf. And it's not the best cooling scarf. Like I, I like actually like will hold it down like so it'll be right against my neck. I'll grab it and like pull it down so it'll be right next to my neck and cool me down. But it's better than it's better than not having it. It, it does help. Yeah, I, I use a cooling towel too sometimes when I remember it. There goes that memory thing again. Um, but I, I, it helps to keep it in my car because <laughs> I almost always have some water with me so I can at least like pour some water on um, one type of cooling, um, uh, cooling neck thing. Sorry, forgot. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I can pour water on that one. And then I also have another one um, that has ice packs in it. Like, I think it might be the same one that you mm -hmm. have, Elizabeth, I think. And I, I do the same thing. I'll like like uh, a cinch it a little bit closer to my neck so that it's it's icy. So it's definitely icy, but they help and they do they really do uh, work for a few hours. 
Um, I used to work a very um, labor intensive job and I, those cooling packs were a necessity. Like I would keep it, I would keep the, the ice inside like a, a lunchbox and it would keep it cold for, for hours and hours. And so every time I needed to change out a new one, um, I would have it with me um, on the go when I was working. So it's, it's helpful to have little like tips and tricks like that. Um, somebody, I think somebody, I don't know, I remember who it was, but somebody was sell, telling me that uh, Walmart and Amazon are now selling those, um, uh, was it portable fans that you could put over your neck? They look just like headphones, but you put them over your neck and the fans are, are battery operated and they face um, towards your face and they just blow air. It's just fans that blow um, air to your face. So I was thinking about looking on Amazon to get some of those because they look they look pretty cool anyway, you know, because they look like you're just wearing some headphones around your around your neck. Um, and I think they come in all sorts of colors. So I mean, that's for me. Just to throw that out there, some cooling ideas. Uh, is that a fashion statement to wear headphones? Yeah. I, like think so. you know, <laughs> <laughs> I think so. It was in my day, back in my... <laughs> back in your day. Well, now you're so old. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I want to get some of those because I think they're I think they're pretty cheap. Um, you, you know, battery operated, so it, it's helpful. Um, I, I also suffer from heat sensitivity, and it, it was pretty bad for a long while. Um, Frank, you mentioned panic attacks, and I... I would get panic attacks too, and as part of my heat sensitivity as well, because I the the way I rationalize it, the way I think it worked out, is um, my MS hug um, played a huge part, and it would always get really really bad during the summer, to where I wouldn't I couldn't get the oxygen that I needed to breathe properly, so I wasn't getting the oxygen to my brain. And so I was having panic attacks often, very often in the summer. Um, so I, I think that's when I started to, to really look into um, cooling products and it's come a long way. Like I've come a long way. Uh, Christy, what, what's your story? Oh yeah, we're not hearing you right now. You might want to, Christy, if you're having a hard time with your microphone, sometimes it's good to sign in and sign out, uh, restart your computer and come back in. Yeah, I don't hear anything. Oh, okay, she she's going to try it. All right. She's try it, yeah. So, this, yeah, may, this may sound silly, Robert, but if you drink something cool, like if you cool down internally, does that help? Um, yeah, I think just just cooling off. I, I bring a thermos. Uh, I think okay. it's, I don't know, a couple quarts, a couple quart thermos. I fill it with ice. And uh, as long as I stay hydrated, I think staying hydrated has a lot to do with uh one, because the, the day I had an anxiety attack, sent me to the ER, I had had two cups of coffee and I didn't drink any water that day. And it was 90 degrees. And um, as long as I stay hydrated, I, I think it does help. But it's not a, it's not an instant um, anxiety attack, I guess. It, it takes some time and I don't really recognize it immediately. Uh, this is all pretty new to me, so um, I don't know when things are coming on. Um, so I'm I'm slow to learn, I guess. I, I don't know I don't know what my triggers are yet. Uh, but and they'll I'm change. They can change, Robert. Are. Just to be honest, they can change. And and the yeah. thing that'll drive you crazy with this 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 disease is uh, like you think you got it figured out and then it'll throw you for a loop. So my best analogy I have is MS is like two water faucets, one uh, that you have complete control over and the other one you have zero control over. So you can <laughs> do whatever you want and that thing might still be full blown and you have no control over. It. Trust me, I've spent, <laughs> was it close to like, you know, nine years trying to figure out the secret formula. I have not figured it out except 
giving myself a break and and chilling it out like letting myself rest that's the only biggest thing but don't i wouldn't worry about i wouldn't give you up your job yet i would try to try these like cooling vests and stuff first and try yeah. to play around with it because you may be able to work longer okay but you're and then you may have to be like look i have to not i don't know if you can change some of your hours or, or certain things so you're not in the heat of the day and I am starting earlier. So instead of starting okay. at seven o'clock, I'm starting at six. That way I can be out an hour earlier. Um, but around here, so back in Chicago, every business is open at five in the morning. All these oh. warehouses, they all open up early. You come out to Salt Lake, nobody opens till eight. So it's tougher to get to customers earlier in the day. Um, but I'm sure with my schedule and my workload, I can, I can manage finding people in the morning. Um, to start at six and just get out earlier. And I'm really gonna push for a couple of uh, refrigerated um, accounts. So we do have accounts all through Salt Lake and um, we do have refrigeration um, customers with you know, 10, 20 forklifts in refrigerated warehouses. So if I can manage to pull off some of those accounts and go to them when they're the hottest days, um, mm -hmm. that might be very advantageous for me. And that sounds like some sort of reasonable accommodation that your your work should offer just to make your job a little more accessible for you. you know, and and I haven't told them. I, I'm afraid of being, um, Oh uh, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm afraid of telling them just because I don't know what their reaction is going to be. I don't know if they're going to try and fire me, say that I could have suffered seizures and I can't drive the work van. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm afraid of being um, uh, like a black sheep and or pigeonholed or something like that. Yeah, and then getting written up for you know random excuses just because of some disease that I had a diagnosis of. You know, um, so I don't even know how to approach that to tell my boss that I might need special um, treatment. You know, um, so I'm. <laughs> It's it's very accommodation. Uh, very, Use the word accommodation. Special oh, accommodation. You or you can tell yeah, like I was you looking, didn't really... I was looking for the correct word. I couldn't think of it. Well, and, somebody and said can... it's not because I'm smart. Jennifer said it, and I remembered a minute later. Yeah. <laughs> and you may may be able to like play off your Chicago roots. Like, look, I I do not handle this heat, guys. This is really hard for me. Is there any way that I can get preferential on? To, you, know, you could totally play up that aspect. Like, look, this is I am not designed for this heat. I did not realize this when I came out to Utah. <laughs> Robert, I think that's a good play, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's true. I mean, you're just tweaking it just a little bit and you're leaving a couple things out. But, Christy, go ahead. See if you can, we can hear you. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, we no. Can you. We you can, can see you. To... We can hear you. Can you, call, can you call on your phone? Can you call on your phone in? And then you're going to want to... Because we want to hear from you. I mean, I call us crazy, Christy. We want to hear from you. Robert, well, Christy's uh, working on technical difficulties. I just wanted to ask if there's a social worker at your neurologist uh, facility. Um, they can be a really great asset to turn to um, with work-related stuff to help to help figure out whether you know your employer would. Because you know that they're, they're not supposed to, but in reality, you do face, um, you know, discrimination from employers if you have a health condition. And, and I would be, I wouldn't be opposed to letting them know. But mm -hmm. that was one of the first things my neurologist said was, "You will be discriminated against." He's seen it, you know, a ton of times uh, with employers, um, and. I don't know because I haven't had any experience with it, right? But um, it seems like it's a very good clinic. I know people come from all over um, to to come to this clinic here at Utah that I'm at. And um, yeah, if there's a social worker there, 
uh, I'll definitely reach out. Uh, but after speaking to Dr. West, he did say um, not to tell my employers uh, for whatever reasons. And, okay. okay, now I got feedback. Sorry. Go ahead and mute your uh, microphone on your video. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. That's a little better. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> uh, this is this is my first like support group. Um, I was diagnosed. It's been so long. Two thousand and three. Oh, the sound back is concerning. Can you take it off speaker and see if that helps? Yeah, 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 let me try that. Or put your phones on to talk. Okay. Or turn down the volume on your computer. Yeah, and then you'll hear us through the phone. Yeah, just turn it. I got a new webcam. Oh, no, this is good right now. It's not so big. Um, so I'm 18 years now, really no problems. I get the heat tolerance. I'm intolerant. <laughs> and it's been close to hundreds here in Colorado. Horrible. Uh, anyway, I'm in a big flare up right now. Uh, just got out of the hospital first time. Third, third round of steroid treatment uh, for the human because my my veins just didn't, couldn't take anymore and they just kept exploding. Um, I just got my midline taken out today. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm starting a new treatment. Uh, I was on Jelenia for nine years no problems um <clears throat> we did an mri this year i have multiple new lesions so now they're putting me on ocrevus so we're going to see how that goes it's just yeah. been a long two weeks now <laughs> sounds like you've had a really rough time yeah and it's all new to me. It, like I said, 18 years, I I think relapsed very minimal, maybe twice. And now it's just, it really hit me this time. And I think it's because I'm in between treatments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My body- You had like, to have that four week, was it four week washout period between Jelenia, if I remember correctly? No, um, they weren't doing that. Basically, it was insurance. Ugh. The holdup was getting approval through insurance. And with Ocrevus, this was new to me. I could push my own meds. I've been doing the steroids, no problem. But this is a situation where I'm having to go to an infusion center. And it's like, okay, this is new. What what do I need to do? Because I'm just used to popping a pill every day. Now, well, you're really lucky, Christy, because you have five people in this group that are taking Ocrevus. One that just Wait, finished okay. his second half dose. So you got a nice. plethora of yeah. people to bounce off your questions. Yeah, lots yeah, of us. You know, and, reading new about new drugs you're always like you see all these side effects and you're like my husband is terrified <laughs> he's like he's like i'm reading all this stuff he's like oh, i'm so scared for you and i'm like i'm not i'm not worried you don't be worried <laughs> you know i know how my body takes stuff and how it rejects stuff um 
the medications I've been on, because I've been on Copaxin, I've been on, uh, I was on Rebus for a little bit. Um, and the, in those type of daily injections, my body was like, no. It, I got so many issues with injection, like the injection sites. I was getting rashes, burned, it was horrible. So I had to tell my doctor, I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> So then, you know, Jelenia was a pill form. He's like, well, let's put you on some Jelenia. See how you do on that. And it did great. I had no new active lesions. And, you know, when when you get to a point when you've had it for so long, um, I went from just the brain scan to the brain scan, C scan, T scan. That's three tests, and I'm just one of those that just get it done. I don't want to come back and sit in this MRI machine, you know, for an hour for each test. So you just do all three at once, and it, it sucks. Your back hurts by the time you're done. You have to, you have to sneeze, because if you do, they have to rerun that whole section because you moved. Um, and it's it's... It's taxing. Like a lot of people don't understand how how much it takes out of you every time. It, and it's once a year it has to be done because that's the only way your doctor can set a baseline and track to see what your progress is. You know, and I'm thankful that I just met with my neurologist neurologist today, and uh, he doesn't believe I transition to like PPMS or anything like that but I'm 18 years so RMS RMR right is that right RMS <laughs> sorry these acronyms get me um so memory I, I can agree and totally relate um I think they would so get that, anybody that's 18 years and I'm still you know where I'm at it's just right now it's kicking my butt it's hard it's hard to you're so used to being independent and it's like you can't do stuff like you used to you know i leave hospital i'm leaving walker because i can't walk because my it affects my right side and i i just can't walk it's like it's not natural i i was walking it's just fine until I have this flare up. And now I'm with a walker and they're hopeful that it'll go back to normal after I start the new treatment. But that's not a guarantee. That's the hard part. It's not a guarantee. So my vision is all messed up right now. I never wear my glasses because they hurt my ears, but I can't wear my contacts because it's like I'm looking at two different, through two different, like, two different eyeballs. They're not, like, communicating with each other to make one singular vision. So it, it's hard. It's tough when you've been in independent for so long, and then something like this comes, and you're like, wait, what? Can we just not? And go back to my normal because I was okay with it. It may not have been the best, but I was okay with it. I can function. Now it's like, it scares me that I might not get all of my function back because it's flare up is so bad. It's the worst. It's horrible. So it, it, it's been fun. That's all I can say. Well, we're glad you're here. So and that you were oh, brave to come join us today, even with your technical <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> it, it got figured out somehow, but I'm sitting here going, come on, it's a brand new camera. This is supposed to be a pleasant plug and play. Yeah, right. Don't lie to me. <laughs> it did. So if I have to join this way going forward, then that's the way it has to be. 
Is um, there anything that we can help you with your your concerns or fears or just know the unknown with Ocurvus? Is there any questions that we can answer as a group here for you to help you? Do you have an infusion date yet? Yeah, I have my first infusion date on the 16th. Okay. Sorry, I just about forgot about that. I was like, I know it's coming up. What day is it? <laughs> so I have the, my first infusion date is on the 16th for the first half and then the second infusion date for the second half is on july 1st so my experience with ocurvus um they gave me 50 milligrams of benadryl the first time along with the steroids um, before the infusion and um i was literally kicking the bottom of the chair trying to walk up because i just got that that benadryl kicked in so hard I was extremely loopy, and um, uh, the first two hours sucked because the Benadryl really did kick my butt. Um, as far as the infusion went, um, they said some people had reactions, and I had a really bad reaction to Texfidera. That's why I went to Ocrevus. Um, but as far as the Ocrevus went, uh, it was four-hour infusion. Everything went splendid. And then the second, uh, second infusion, I told them to back off the Benadryl because uh, it was too much the first time around. So they gave me 25 milligrams of Benadryl, the second infusion, and, uh, and then the steroids. And the second infusion went flawlessly. I was in and out of there three and a half hours. Uh, my, the clinic I'm currently going to, they're trying to push the Texfidera in two hours. And they asked me if I'd like to volunteer for that. I said, no, thank you. Um, no need to push the infusion any faster. Um, but uh, from, what Dr. West had told me, they had um, been using Texfidera for five years before 28, or I'm sorry, they had been using Ocrevus and uh, researching it five years before they came out with it in 2018 and had it approved, and they had really good results with it um, before then. Um, so there are really no long-term studies, but it was actually being used since 2013. So if that helps you at all, that was my experience with it. Well, my neurologist today, he was telling me, he said, you know, he was like, I'm really hopeful that getting you over on the Ocrevus, um, it's probably, he said it's the strongest right now on the market to really nail it. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. It's only twice a year. So they have to really overdose you, overload you to get you through the next six months for your maintenance. That makes sense. Um, I'm not really concerned about Benadryl. Benadryl, pain meds and stuff like that, they they never have an effect on me. Like everybody's like, oh, that knocks me out. And I'm like, what? It does? It, it does nothing <laughs> to me. So I'm not too concerned about that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's just funny because I, I did the five day infusion of steroids. And then these next five days, I'm tapering from, because it, it's like a thousand milliliters per mm -hmm. whatever. A thousand yeah. milligrams or one gram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it's, a, it's a large, it's a very, it's very powerful. Because honestly, I had vertigo for eight days. And usually, because that is one of my tells that something's not right with me. It's vertigo, the worst feeling in the world. And no matter what I was taking, because I, I usually pop in methylene when I start feeling dizzy, and nothing was touching it. it. It was like it wouldn't go away. So after eight days, my husband finally said, "We're going to the ER," and I said. I don't want to. It, it was just me being stubborn. I, I, sometimes I have no faith in medical doctors that they know what I'm going through because that's not their specialty. And I've had instances where I've gone to the ER and they're like, oh, you're fine. Go ahead, go home, rest. You'll be fine. And then something is not fine, you know, type of thing. So I, I lost faith in some of the medical staff or medical to help me 
So what about, sorry. what about your IV? How is that going to work if your veins are, do you have a port or something? <laughs> we had, um, so my neighbor across the street, she's a nurse. And so I'll call her when they tell me, oh, we're going to do this to you. I call her to get some like clarity on it because she knows she's got to explain like for dummies. She's got to like really break it down for me sometimes because you can explain it to me and I'm like, what? It's like a deer in headlights look. And she knows that. And uh, she's been a nurse for many years. <laughs> so I call her and I'm like, they're doing this to me. Is it okay? <laughs> she's like, yes. Well, which one? And she'll say, which one are they doing? I'm like, I think they're doing a main line. And she goes, oh, oh. And I'm like, don't say that, Donna. Please don't say that. Because <laughs> the main line one, like, actually goes to your art part. Um, and she's like, that's a little bit more intense. And I'm like, oh, thanks. Well, actually, it was a midline. Because it's normally it's just peripheral and that's what exploded all my veins yeah i think my veins were just like we've had enough being here in the hospital being pumped with all this stuff i was like friend is, so friend is okay that. that's why i was wondering because you don't want to be in the middle of an infusion and have your veins pop well the thing is is that if they need to they'll do another midline for the infusion and that's the great thing because I did talk to my doctor about this today. I was like, what if they're so stressed out that they can't get it to do a peripheral IV for the infusion? He's like, don't worry about that. They they have their tricks. That's why you go to an infusion center um, because they're all trained how to properly place the correct IV if you know you're having trouble with you know, a normal IV. So I'm not too worried about it. The only thing is, is that I am tired of looking like a human pincushion of bruises all over my body. And like, I just got the one out today and you can just see, I don't know if you can see it. It's like, it's bad. That's because they have to stretch your vein. Oh, you can't see it. There we, see it. There we go. They have to stretch your vein. And of course, when you stretch the vein to put the midline in, it bursts the vein, but it's still a viable vein. And so it's just a whole lot of experience that I'm okay to not go through again. <laughs> and I, I pray that I don't have to, that, you know, that this is a good end. To what I'm going through. Well, so, things go according to plan. You'll get the one infusion, you'll get one two weeks later, and then you're done for six months. No more poking. Right. Well, and the thing everybody's like, oh, well, you get to quit taking a daily pill. And I'm like, well, that's mm -hmm. not the only daily pill I, I take, but thank you for thinking of me. Because um, I don't know about anybody else, but I have issues with keeping myself awake so my neurologist put me on new vigil and that's for people who are narcoleptic or have shift work sleep issues stuff like that and lately that has stopped working for me too so today he's like oh well you can take one he's like when do you take it and i said well in the morning with the rest of my pills he goes well, it, you know, if you start getting tired, just take another one at noon. I'm like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die from taking all these pills. But okay, if that'll get me through the day. Okay. What strength individual yeah. are you on, Christy? Uh, I always confuse this one with my Impura. It could be like 25, mm -hmm. 50, 100, 200 milligrams. 150. Yeah. On the new vigil. I'm on 150 on the vigil, and then I I don't know if any of you are on it, but Empira. For, I, it, for just, like, it just reminded me I forgot to order it today. <laughs> I'm just gonna do a reorder. 
Right. It's you know, 10 milligrams. 10 milligrams twice a day. You know, it, so it's not just I'm losing one pill. Sure, but, it, it, you know, between my, I call it legal crack. <laughs> The thing that's supposed to help my legs, so they're not so heavy, you know, um, depression, so my Prozac, it, it, just because I'm losing one pill, it's not a big celebration, because <laughs> I, I still take a ton of pills, I still take vitamin D, B6, B12, all these other vitamins, and, you know, it. I never thought I'd be, like, I started actually in, like, my mid 30s that I had a pill box. You know, I never thought I would get to that point in my life so young. It, it, it's, it's very sobering when you actually sit back and think about it. You're like, okay, I'm a little sober, like sobered and humble. But but still it's it's not fun. I wonder it, 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 if you'll start feeling a little better. I know when I took this, this, the medril, the solumedril, the steroid, it jacks me up for weeks. I first love it because I'm like, woo, I get energy. And then as it starts to wear off, yeah. I feel like crap. So I'm yeah, hoping it, because you've gotten so many high doses of it. I'm hoping that you're going to feel better as that gets out of your system. And just if you didn't know already, the steroid dose you get, for Ocrevus is a quarter of that. You get 250 milligrams, not a thousand. So just FYI on that. Well, this is, I usually don't have um, new medications. I usually do not have the, the worrisome side effects, but the steroid, everything was coming out of left field. But like one of the big side effects is insomnia. So the first five days that I did, I didn't sleep for four days. I slept the first night. I was like, ah, oh, I'll be fine. Come the next day after my second dose, no sleep. Third dose, no sleep. Fourth dose, no sleep. Fifth dose, eh, about an hour of sleep. Then the next day, I just slept. It was like, and then I got wicked heartburn. I was popping in acids and like tums like crazy because everything, like a smell of something would cause heartburn. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and then the second round, I slept like a baby through the whole thing. I had no insomnia. This last round, first two days, it was okay. Last night, I haven't slept. I'm, I am still awake from yesterday and I'm still functioning. That's the sad thing that scares me. And drugs today's are my last, I took my last. Huh? I said drugs are very powerful. When I had my solumedrol dose, when I, I went blind in my left eye temporarily. So they gave me the five day solumedrol. I like, I get one to two, maybe three hours of sleep. And I was zipping around with the e-bike going, woo! <laughs> And that's yeah. the funny thing, like, you're like, all of a sudden you have these, like, ambitions just to get stuff done, and then you try to get up to do the said stuff, and you're like, oh, I can't, I'm broken. It, it, in your head, it's playing, like, magic. You're like, oh, I can get this done. I, I'm on it. And then you try to follow through, and you're like, well, dang it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I should be done by now, but I just stood up. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's it's kind of it's kind of a mind game. It really is. Like you're like, what do I believe? <laughs> do I do I believe that these drugs are going to make me better? Because in my mind they are, but my body tells me they're not. <laughs> so it's just a lot of unknowns right now so that's that's where i'm at it's like and you know it's unfortunately the husband gets the brunt of it because right now because everything is so unknown my emotions are up here 
and they're normally just center line, but like everything just triggers me. And he's like, you need to just stop, stop talking. He's like, I can't handle you right now. And I'm like, I can't handle me. Uh, and I was like, you don't know what I'm going through. And he's like, yes, I do. <laughs> so I'm like, no, you don't. Do you feel like you have um, adequate ways to be able to vent and get out all your feelings? Because I know MS for me, it's you're always, for me, I'm always in, at some point, I'm always in some form of mourning and grieving with MS. That's just how it mm-hmm. is. And you get used to a new normal and then it changes. And then you got to mourn that. And then you have this new normal. And then it, it's always, my life is always in flux. So um, I had to learn the best way to, because I learned if I didn't express it, it would just kind of bury inside me and become very toxic. And I had to learn to vent. So I was just wondering if you have found um, a way that helps you be able to release all these feelings and emotions. And there's just a lot going on. And it's really hard to just, I was just wondering about that, what you were. Yeah, I have a really good support system with my family. Um, you know, and it's taken my mom quite a long time to actually acknowledge the fact that there's something wrong with me. Um, and so now, you know, many years later, she's starting to want to be more proactive on helping with, you know, but debilitating me because she's seeing a lot of the changes because I have a lot of weakness to my right side. My doctor wrote a script today for an AFO. Um, I've gone through physical therapy multiple times and it's like, I, I don't know if any of you have experienced this. If you've gone through physical therapy, you like take two steps forward and then all of a sudden your body's like, uh uh-uh, uh, and you take five steps back. And it's like you're resetting all the time. And it's, that's frustrating. You know, because I need to build muscle strength in my thighs. Because I'm like, I walk a lot, so why do I have such weak muscles? That doesn't, that right there is hard for me to like wrap my brain around. You know, that I use my legs a lot as much as I can, but yet they're weak. Why? That, that doesn't, it doesn't just compute in my brain. That, you know, that's something I, I've had to deal with, and I'm dealing with it. I I know my body is like a, it's a, probably like a 158-pound body because I like to be less and I don't move anymore. And, you know, I start going to the doctor, and they're weighing me, and they're like, oh, you went 51. I'm like, huh. You know, then it's like you're 148. Huh. Now you're 137. Now I'm 137. I weigh like 20 pounds less than what my body looks like and it's the ms because the muscles and i finally stopped the pt because i can't strengthen the muscles that's the whole thing it's my is in my mind and i I just i can't do it and um it's it's very disheartening because i always like walking and i just thought i'd walk in the old age well i can't walk and over a year ago i'd ask people to walk me with my walker you know now some people are like well, I could take you for a walk. It's like, well, I needed that a year ago. Now I can't walk anymore. You know, I just can't do it. I take a few steps. When you're walking around your house, it's like, it's my house. You know, I know where the walls are. I know where the furniture is. I, I use a walker in the house. But something you know where I can grab on to. I use, I have, I have a walker. I use a, a rollator and I put a basket and a tray on top. So I pretty much use that. But Sometimes I forget, you know, then I have some parked in other places. But um, I know for me, just really recently, I came up with a new image for myself, which I wanted to share with people. And nobody's going to want to own this, but I'm telling you, it's really been helpful dealing with 
people who think you look fine. You seem great. I think you're doing just fine. And, um, and it's a lot about the cognition and the slowing down. And, you know, I had my 70th birthday. I actually had a party. I didn't think I'd have a party, but I had like three days of people visiting. And then the last day was a party, even though I kept saying, is that a party? And I was like, no, that was a party because of the pandemic and the masks are down. And so people came and in the end, there were six of us playing music and singing, which nobody's done in the last year and a plus. So it was, um, and, and I realized, you know, I don't have any pictures because everybody was in the moment, which is great. Like I rather have been in the moment than have pictures. But um, the day that was Monday, but Sunday, a friend called and she's like, okay. And I'm trying to sleep. Like, why am I trying to sleep? Because we need our sleep. And, people, you know, well, it's already 10 o'clock. It doesn't matter. You know, I need to sleep. And I heard someone called at 930. She's a night owl. And she said, well, I'm coming. I got a new phone. And then I'm going to hunt on that. And I was like, well, I'm not going to. I'm just slept through that one. And then at 10 o'clock, it's like, OK, we're leaving here around three. You're leaving at three. But Monday, you're supposed to come on Monday. And that's kind of when more of the musicians were coming. And I and then I tried to. Um, I finally, I answered the phone because I just thought I need to do it. And she's peppering me with like, well, who's going to be there? How many people are coming? And what is that? About? You know, I was like, I, I, and then she said, well, no one wanted to come. Let me get him. He's in the garden. Oh, no. Now he's calling me back. I, I just said, I don't want you coming today. You said you're coming on Monday. That's what I want. And then I just started sobbing. And I thought, you know, I'm frail. And it's that morning that we lost Kim, but maybe she's coming back. That yeah. morning you know, of owning that I'm frail. I mean, who wants to own that? You know, and I, I mean, I've only just been starting to say I'm disabled, but that doesn't cut it. You know, I'm disabled. Oh, you have a walker, so you're okay. You know, no, I, I'm frail. And then I called her back and I said, you know, think of me as your 90-year-old aunt. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't tell your 90-year-old aunt you're coming on, on Monday and then go, okay, we'll be there today at three, you know, and I'm using that phrase a lot more because like when I go to the pool, there's these steps you have to go up to, to, to register. And then I've had two people tell me, you know, well, we have a ramp. Well, I don't need to waste my fucking energy on a ramp, you know, and I don't want to have to negotiate with stupid lifeguards that aren't trained because the manager doesn't do it. The director doesn't do it. And so I've written them a letter and I said, you need to train people. You shouldn't question anybody with a disability. I don't think I use frail yet. I might have, you know, that, if I say I can't get up the steps, that's enough because I, I can get up the ramp. But, you know, I had to walk with my car over like Ripley. You know, I can't handle any any change. in. I can't really shouldn't be out by myself anymore. It's dangerous. I can't handle any change in the grade. Um, so I'm using that word frail and it's kind of helped me because then I had an eye exam. Now I wish Kim was here because it was like the blurry eyes. I had an eye exam and then they're like, and it, and it was the doctor I had before I knew I had MS. So five times we did an exam. We made my glasses three times. Why isn't it good enough? You know, well, now we know why it's, you know, we can only get as good as we can get. So she's doing the, you know, is it one or is it two? Which one's better? One or two? Oh, let's just do that again. Okay. Two and two. You know, and, and then I finally, I said to her four times, I cannot process, you know, I have, cognitive i cannot process that data you know between the looking at it and figuring out which one is better and then i finally said think of me as your 90 year old aunt you know it's like or your 85 year old aunt except your 85 year old aunt can walk and i can't but it's it just you know owning the frail part that i'm frail i mean it's it's sad but you know we don't look here nobody looks frail you know yeah, it's just one of those like invisible pieces that you would never know that someone is suffering with multiple sclerosis because it is it's very invisible, you know. And I want to kind of address Robert with his employment, you know, with the the fear of the discrimination of employment. You know, I have I'm. Thankfully, with a company that has been super understanding, you know, I I don't tell people 
that I have MS because it's really a need to know basis. You know, yeah. um, I recently got a new box and you know, I was having, it was like the beginning of my floor up and, you know, I was having trouble walking around the office and you know, I pulled him to, into a meeting and said, I know you do. You, you only started like a month ago, but here's what's going on with me. You know, and he's like, he was super compassionate and he's like, well, whatever you need, you let me know. And we will figure this out. And, you know, it's great to have that support at work, too. Um, but like I said, it's a need to know when it comes to your employer. It, you know, you, you don't have to announce it to everybody. You know, and, and, and I don't want to because I don't want I don't want people yeah. looking at me differently or treating me differently. Um, right. You know? Part, part of me wants to because I left Chicago, I moved to Salt Lake, I've been here eight months, and then I got diagnosed, um, whatever, five months in, so I feel like I really self-isolated myself because I don't have family here, I don't have friends here, I don't have, it's just me. So being able to talk with you folks really does help out, um, and I, I do have a girlfriend I've been seeing now for about four months four months five months um but dealing with the cognitive issues we were i just had an argument with her the other day about um um i set up a date and i was supposed to meet up with her on wednesday well i completely forgot that i said i was going to meet up with her wednesday you know and uh, uh i'm telling her listen if if we're scheduling stuff i gotta get it written down because i forget you know she's like oh well you seem normal and I, I try to explain it to her that I'm not normal, you know, like, like, I'm well, you seem normal to me, you know, you get it over and over and then you seem normal to me. I don't yeah. see it. I don't notice. And I've had, you like, know, how, come you can, how come you can go to work? If you can go to yeah. work, you ought to be able to remember to see me. No. <laughs> and, I, and I've had like two or three arguments. It's very tough, like trying to yeah. explain because I don't even understand it myself. I don't know why I can't remember things. You know what I mean? It's just, um, so yeah, um, I would love to be able to tell my employers um, what's going on and be able to talk to other people about it. But um, the fear of discrimination, um, because I do work um, heavy equipment. I mean, I'm picking up cylinders at 150 pounds. I'm, you know, um, if, if they find out that I have this, uh, I don't know how much of a liability they think I'm going to be. And honestly, I don't know how long I'll be able to a do big it. big liability. You, you know, know, your neurologist told you, a big liability. You yeah. know, if you even go to the DMV with a, with a cane, <laughs> you're going to lose your driver's license. Jeez. You know, one thing I will say, Colorado is a very flexible state. You know, um, as far as, yeah, they do have, um, so they don't have to give a reason to let somebody go. So uh, it's, a, it's a right to work state. You know, it's completely up to the employer or the employee whether they want to terminate their employment. You don't have to give a reason why. You don't have to do anything. You just have to say, okay, I'm done. Just leave. Um, or give your two weeks. You don't even have to do your exit interview. You know, it's a courteous thing to do to not burn bridges that way. But that's one thing I do appreciate about being in Colorado. They're a very flexible state. Um, and there's a... I don't know if you guys know a lot of the history behind MS in Colorado. Colorado is one of the hot zones for MS. There's something, research has shown something with the longitude and latitude as to where Colorado sits that is causing higher rates of people with MS. So it's really funky. I haven't been able to really dive into it, but I've seen a lot of studies on it. Um, so I think that it's 
they're a little bit more forgiving because there's so many people with disabilities disabilities here. Okay. So that's just speaking from my own experience on where I live. Um, I don't know the statistics with other states. You know, it it's really eye opening to start doing some research and seeing, you know, this is like a worldwide pandemic that is not really addressed because it's not like it's not a big hot topic. Like, well, you know, Christy, there's a million people in the United States living with multiple sclerosis. So it's right. more it's more common than maybe you realize. And you know, every person's situation is individual and that's the frustrating yet amazing thing about it. And I think that there's so much hope. You know, I was diagnosed 23 years ago and there were only three medications available. And now look, there's over 20. So I know that it's not exactly the answers that any of us are looking for. Right. I'm hopeful. You know, yeah. I think that there's so much to be encouraged about. And Robert, you know, you could symptom management, stay on your Ogrevis and be guns blazing for a number of years. You don't know, and that's frustrating, but I like to believe. I don't know, Frank, don't you think attitude is really important? And You know I believe that. And you are you are living it proof positive right now. Robert, can I say something to Robert? I'm I'm been dying to say this. You you made a couple of comments early about trying to get into the refrigerated, you know, area. Warehousing, yeah. Are you a marketer at all? Am are I what? A marketing type at all, or are you just a mechanic? Uh, honestly, I I've got a lot of common sense. I'm a good person. I could I could do pretty much anything. You know what? It's a perfect it's a perfect thing. It's good for everybody. If you could convert that into doing for the refrigerated industry, what uh, we're talking about doing outside now. It works for everybody. It works for the company. It works for you. It just you gotta you gotta find a way to get it to the right people, and that that's all it's about. Okay. I mean, it's so easy for us to just say, "Well, we can't do that." There is a way to do it. I don't. I'm not telling you what it is because I don't know. <laughs> but there's a way to do it. Gotcha. There's a way to do it. Think about it. Get your get your your friends together and sit down and brainstorm it, and I'll bet you that somebody comes up with a good idea and protects your privacy. Yeah, it protects your privacy. I'm I'm with you on that. You know, you, you want to, enough crap is happening to us that you want to preserve your dignity and your privacy and do things at your time. They like control what you can. You know, always lived by I got diagnosed at 23 I've always told myself yes I have multiple sclerosis this disease is not going to define me I am not going to be a victim of this disease because I have had family members in my that have MS that you know, my grandpa has MS, and I didn't find out till after I was diagnosed that he had MS for years. He was a concrete player, so he was always outside. I don't know how he did it in the middle of the summer, you know, pouring concrete. Um, but he's 80, my mom, my grandma's, so he's gonna be 85 this year. He's doing great, you know, but I've always just had the mindset that this disease is not gonna define me. It's not gonna take me down. 
And I think that is probably what has kept me in check the past 18 years up until just recently. And I think that's just because I was going through transition of DMTs. So, and my body didn't know how to respond to it. So it's responding with, hey, guess what? We're going to be a jerk. And we're going to let you live everything that you've been missing out on for the past 18 years in two weeks. So I, I honestly, I've just always had a positive outlook. And I think that's probably why I've been able to maintain, you know, um, and I, and I did that. I mourned, I mourned my new normal, right? When I first got diagnosed and I spent a couple of weeks doing that. And then I'm like, no, like I could choose to be happy or I could choose to be miserable. And, and um, yeah, that's, that's going to be my mindset. Yeah, you know, it, it, until it happens, change happens, then I'll mourn and then I'll keep moving. Yeah, it's kind of like, like how it goes. Yeah. You reap what you sow. You know, if you're going to have negative thoughts the negative thoughts are just gonna consume you know and it is it is difficult when you first get diagnosed because you really don't know what a possible outcome could be and it, it took me years to really understand what this was and, it and, then, and then even look at you, Christy, like you just when you think you get a handle on it, it's like, oh, by the way, I'm still in control. And let me like, <laughs> you know, but let's turn up your world. Let's turn it upside down. This will be fun. But bless yeah. the Lord for coming here and, you know, just talking. And there's so much power in using your voice to meet other people. So that's well, and it kind of refreshing to speak with people who are you know and this is something I learned not two people are the same because your myelin is attacked in different areas of your brain so you're never going to have somebody with the same exact symptoms saying like you could have similar symptoms but it's not going to be the same density or it's, they're not going to happen the flare ups at the same time you know, that was a difficult one to try to to soak into my husband's brain. Because when we first started dating, I told him, you know, I wasn't going to get in a serious relationship um, without letting my partner know what was going on with me. Yeah. Um, and he's like, well, your grandpa has MS. He, he, he's fine. I'm like, there's not two cases that are exactly the same. There is not. It's impossible. Because. So just has, to, Sorry. So no, go, go ahead. I just wanted to go back to that whole positivity thing for a moment. Um, uh -huh. When I was first diagnosed, um, well, I, I say first, but I mean like within the year or so that I was diagnosed, um, it uh, neurology really interested me for obvious reasons, right? And so mm -hmm. the idea that um, your your brain and your neurons are very plastic and therefore they have the ability to regrow and regenerate and build up um, in different portions of your brain. So even if you have some lesions that affect one, I don't know, uh, that give you one symptom, you know, you may possibly be able to regrow more neurons to sort of help alleviate um, whatever uh, neurons were broken down. So that right. alone right there was enough to give me plenty of hope and plenty of possibility because I knew that like, like, yes, there's a way that maybe someday I will regenerate and I will, you know, get better from this kind of like, <laughs> kind of like one of those cartoon characters. Yeah. Yeah. I can just re yeah. regenerate and grow. And <laughs> Like that's comforting enough for me. And, you know, I feel like I've, I have come a long way. Like I, I tell people all the time that my, my symptoms um, were, were a lot. I had so many, many different symptoms, so many different areas. And um, 
you know, like what you were saying earlier, Christy, everybody is different, of course, but um, a lot of those symptoms have alleviated themselves and have gotten better. MS hug, for example, I mentioned the panic attacks earlier, and I haven't had a panic attack like since 2019. So like, I'm super happy. Yeah, high five. And that's, uh, <laughs> well, that, that, was, that was a question. That was a question. Sorry. Okay, I thought you were like, uh, everyone talks about it. That's what I thought. Everybody talks about an MS hug. What is an MS hug? Um, well, it's like, um, for me, it manifested in a few different ways, but basically, it affects your, your chest area. Um, so for me, it felt like I had a corset on all the time. So it was always squeezing me um, from, from all sides. Um, and in addition, for me, at least, um, it, I had like a, it, it felt like I had like a, a dense something always squishing, squishing my chest in mm -hmm. um, so that I couldn't really laugh very much, which is, you know, always a bummer when you can't laugh. Um, so it, laughing was painful um eating was painful um so i guess i'm guessing maybe it affected my my gastro um area uh my stomach because i i lost a lot of weight too because i couldn't eat so it just affects that entire chest area um but i think most people or many people describe it as like a, a feeling of uh, wearing a corset all the time okay were, were you going to say something elizabeth oh um well yeah, I, I, I did have the MS hug, but I wanted to say something to Christy because um, your story kind of coincides a lot with mine because I was diagnosed at 20, and though I had a relapse at 22, um, that took me quite a while to work back from, I, I was able to work back, and um, I was doing really well all through the time when I had kids, my two kids, breastfeeding them. And then like nine months after weaning, I had a, a relapse where um, I got a lesion in my brainstem and um, it caused partial numbness that's still there. The partial numbness hasn't gone away. And there was a, like a month of time like you, I was waiting for my insurance to get everything approved for Okrava. So after my relapse, and I wasn't offered steroids, my doc my doctor didn't think it would in that case really help because oddly, though I'm RRMS, I don't there's not a lot of inflammation on my on my MRIs um, or none. <laughs> um, uh, so. I was really, I was really, really frustrated because I would walk and I would try to walk and I would become more numb with the movement. And it was really frustrating. And I was getting by with the cane, but I thought it was going to need to walk her. And then I got the Ocrevus infusion and it was the first dose of steroids I had ever had. So it gave me a like, I like felt so wonderful for about four days and then and then it went back to normal, but I did physical therapy and occupational therapy and just kept focusing on keeping going. And I, I kind of call myself part time disabled because my symptoms fluctuate a lot. Um, like Sunday, I took a three mile hike with my mom. I used oh. medical cannabis. so. I can do that because um, sometimes I might not be able to. But um, and then the last couple of days, I need the cane to walk around the house because I I'm having more difficulty walking. But it's been two and a half years on Ocrevus, and though there was a point in time where I was using a walker and a rollator, um, just uh, because some I would never know. If I take a walk, I take the roll later because I would never know when my walking abilities would worsen. Um, it's two and a half year, later, years later, and sometimes I can walk without a cane. And some when I hike, I use a walking stick, and it's just it's a lot of up and down. But there is up, there is there is coming. You can come back from 
everybody is different. Everybody with MS is different, but I'm saying that my walking ability has improved um, in these two and a half years on Ocrebus, and at least things seem stable. <laughs> well, you know, that, that gives me some hope, you know, because that is my biggest fear is losing like because my legs aren't working correctly right now um that that's going to be a permanent change and that i think that is what is freaking me out the most right now is i've always been so independent and been able to do things for myself um and then this is happening and i'm like oh am i am i gonna get my life back <laughs> you know am i gonna go back to somewhat close to my normal christy yeah you're you'll What's always, that? you'll always be able to be independent just set your mindset to that uh believe me i have known that and and i am a firm believer that i am going to be independent now it may mean i have to write a lot of checks but i'm going to be independent i'm going to do my own thing and i i think it's just something that we've all got to do uh and not not force ourselves to rely on other people well you know that's that's kind of the battle my husband and i are having right now because he he tells me I'm so stubborn. It's not me being stubborn. It's me trying to rationalize my limitations. And when I do need help, I, I have no problem asking him for help when I do need it. But don't force your help on me. I'll ask for it when I need it. And that's kind of the battle we're we're kind of going through right now. Um, because this is the first time he's seen me struggle. Um, we've, we've been together in years. And, you know, I has, I was newly uh, within a year when I first met him of being diagnosed. So he's pretty much been here for my entire journey. So this is the first time he's seen me like, really struggle so we're both in a position of trying to figure stuff out so it, it you know and of course like i was saying earlier my emotions are way up there and unfortunately he's getting the front of it because i don't know how to process it correctly you guys know you don't process things quick like everybody else it, it just it's impossible like you actually have to break it down, analyze it, and make sure it's the right thing you want to say or do. Otherwise, well, it just Christy, you need you need to cut yourself a little bit of slack because you're on a crap ton of steroids. And I know you you said you've been diagnosed for a while, but mm -hmm. I if ever I'm on steroids, I am just an emotional nightmare. And while Dan is not here tonight. He would be shaking his head saying, yes, uh, yes, that I am. Steroids just mess with my emotions. So, you know, just especially oh with, you, yeah, with you tapering down, I think you'll probably get a better grasp. So. Yeah, I, I don't think I've cried so much as I have, <laughs> you know, yeah. while I was taking my steroids. I'm like, Am I at the age of menopause? No, not quite yet. No. <laughs> so it's like there's just so much unanswered right now, you know, and it, it's so like difficult. <laughs> it's like how do I how do I address this without sounding like a bitch? <laughs> You know, there, there's. I, I I go. I get professional help every week. I have a counselor. I do it by telephone right now because of the COVID. I'll probably have to go back in a couple of months. But I talk to her every week, and 
it's amazing because she doesn't like she doesn't like give me great advice or anything. It's just like I have a third party person that I can just totally not have to be a friend to her and I can just release my pressure like, valve. It's this beautiful yeah, your thing. Word vomit. Like my bleh. word yes, thank you. My word vomit. And I pay her to listen to me and it's fantastic. And I have no I think it's an, a great thing. And since I've tapped out all my medical stuff, doesn't cost me a thing every week. Hey, how's it going? And I fill her in on my week and it works out really, really well for me. Cause I learned, I don't know, like two or three years, I was really quiet, which people in this group would be like, Kim, you were quiet. But um, yeah, I was really quiet. And I realized that that was really toxic to me because I was letting things really build up inside. And then I realized I have to be really open about what's going on with me because MS is a hard thing for people to really you know parts of it really is an invisible disease and it's a real struggle so don't be afraid to go see a counselor I know they do lots of telehealth now if you don't feel comfortable going somewhere uh, because of COVID or just problems logistically going somewhere because it's tough Uh, but I'd highly recommend that it's been a game changer for me and the other thing I also want to talk about was brain plasticity my first lesion when I went to Mayo Clinic in beginning of 2002, um, when I went back 10 years later, the lesion was gone. It completely healed up. It was no longer. They're like, we wouldn't have known that you had a lesion by looking at your MRI. Yeah, and I've had I've had good scans where the, he's like, your your lesions are like going away, and then. Now, now this last scan, I had a new lesion on the brain. I had a new lesion on my spine, and and I'm like, okay, that would explain some of the issues I'm having. But this has been going on way too long. Um, so, and that's when he decided he wanted to change therapies. I don't think he realized how long it would take for insurance approval and the consequences it like is dealing me. So, um, you know, but he's, he's very, he, today he was very optimistic. He's like, this is one of the most powerful drug therapies out there right now. Um, he's like, so I really believe it. You're going to have a good turn. Yeah. You just have to, I was like, I, I believe that too. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed, say some prayers and be optimistic about it. And Christy, we're all like here, everybody in this group is going to be like super optimistic and we're going to want to check back in with you. And I know this is your first time here and I feel like I'm trying to pick you up or something, but can I get, will you write down or will you write, give Give Kim your your contact information if you feel comfortable so that we can send you a reminder because our next group will be meeting Tuesday the 22nd at 8 30 p.m. And if you when you sign up, if you feel comfortable giving us your information, we can put you on the mailing list so that we'll send you something because we all know we have cognitive problems occasionally and this way you'll get an automatic email to remind you about the meeting yeah um i swear so my calendar on my cell phone is my saving grace (laughs) yeah gotta love those it if it is not in my calendar it doesn't exist yeah because if i don't do it right away i will not remember Welcome I'm to the exact same way. Yep. Christy, do you know yeah. a lot of people that have MS? Have you been in part of other groups or things in your community at all? No, it's this is like this is like I said, this is this is the first group I've ever been inclined to to reach out to just because everything that's been going on, I'm like I, I need people to talk to that can understand me. You know, yeah, and, people. you know, so that, that is 
where like I was like I, I need people who can understand what I am possibly dealing with because they may have gone through it before. I've looked for groups here in Colorado, um, but it, it's so weird because they're not as prevalent. It, it, it's There's a lot of people here who have MS, but it's not like a, a, a big community for support groups. I even reached out to like MS Society and you know they only have like they can only recommend like in-person group sessions but it's literally like it would take me an hour to get there and you know where I do you live long. in Colorado I am in Brighton which is uh, it's about 20 minutes northeast of Denver. Okay. Um, but everything that has that is centralized with MS, um, they do very south of Denver, and it's like that's like an hour drive for me. <laughs> so it's like I, I, there was a point where I was like, I feel like I'm damned if I do and damned if I don't. And that's the beauty of this group, Christy, is where right. you do it right from the comfort of your own home. Yeah, I was like, I need to find a, like a, an online virtual group, you know, because I, I, Bingo. I don't mind driving, but it's, it's, it actually takes a lot of energy out of me. Yeah. I, I don't know about you guys, but. Driving is very, like, literally exhausting. Yeah. yeah. I have a huge problem with driving. It will, like, debilitate me super fast. Even if I'm not driving and I'm just riding, I can become uh, super, like, a puddle of, on the, right. on the seat. Like, oh, I'll just pick, like, my, today, like, my sister and her family are all in town. And today was the day, like... I have to have a chill day today. I got a couple activities already going on. I can't hang out. Well, we can just pick you up. I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. That's not good. It doesn't work for me. I have to stay here. I can't do that. But tomorrow, if I rest up, tomorrow, hopefully, I can do stuff. So, yeah, it's <laughs> it, it's a sometimes just thinking about stuff wears me out. I'm like. I'm too tired. To, I, I know it needs to be done, but my brain, um, my brain is like, um, yeah, you're too tired to do it now because you thought about it for too long. Yeah. It's horrible. It, it, I'm like, I didn't even do anything. I just thought about it. <laughs> so, yeah. My expectations of me now versus before MS night and day mm -hmm. and I had to really learn and you'll learn a lot of people that have MS we, we're kind of go-getters you know and um for us to have to stop our lives and like learn to like okay I want to do 20 things today okay two may be all I get to do today which which two are you gonna pick and, and that's it and realize you know today's the day where you know, just being able to like make food and take a shower. That's all I can do today. And I have to be okay with that. And that, like I said, is this huge, it's this long grieving process and just really noticing, okay, well, what can I do and what can't I do? And I've had huge issues with my self-worth and self-esteem because I was very previously, you know, my job is very brain heavy. And then I couldn't even do the simplest of math and making all these mistakes. I have dyslexia. And then it was like totally out of, I couldn't keep it in check anymore because of my MS. So, you know, just a total game changer and just learning to just like, like get to find my Zen and be okay with it. Cause I think with me and I come from a very hardworking family, my dad, excuse me, my grandpa cut down to 40 hours a week when he, 
was 70. And then I don't think he retired till he was 86. My dad's like 71 and still works 40 hours a week. I come from these hardcore working people. And so for me to like not really work much was huge for me. And that was massive. And I've had to learn and it's taking years and I'm still dealing with it. It's a constant thing, but just learning. It's not about doing, it's about being. And I had to learn the difference that my self-worth isn't about doing, it's about being. And I know that sounds kind of weird and I know I'm tired, so it probably came out wrong, <laughs> but. No, it makes well, sense. I mean, yeah, it's, it's just to address that, um, today we had to stop on my work because I had to get my pay stub because I have to show financials for some stuff. And, you know, I had an updated medical excuse <laughs> for not being at work to give to my boss. And I just looked at him and I was like, is this killing me? I was like, I don't know how not to work. I've been working since I was 14. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know that concept. So it's like, it's literally killing me. I, I'm not working. You know, because working I feel keeps me like on point you know, a little bit more alert and, you know, it, it, it's so hard to describe because it's, it's just something that you know, mm -hmm. and it's hard to describe, yes, but you're like, you have it right there, but it's right there at the tip of your brain, but you can't articulate it. You're talking but, to yeah. the choir here. I've I never done that. I get it. I totally got it. I had to quit my full-time job five years ago, and that was really struggle for me. Yes. And then I started working for my parents, and I was so terrible. Like, when I did my disability uh, hearing in November, <laughs> the, the lawyer's like, you know, see if your parents will write something. I'm like, should my parents write something? Because they're my technically my employers. Like, yeah, have them write a section of your errors and your accommodations. And to read that, that was tough. And my mom's like, this is really tough to write. And I'm like, yeah, it is. She's like, I, I have a really hard time. I'm like, yeah, but you know, tell the truth and be honest. And reading that, you're like, who would ever hire you? Because you can't even do the basic functions. I'm telling the judge at one point, I couldn't even just sit there. Like, it doesn't matter what I had to do. I could have done whatever I wanted to do sitting there for eight. I couldn't even sit there for eight hours. I ended up after two or three, I'd be laying on the floor because I couldn't even sit up anymore just to answer the phone that never rang. And then when the rang, phone rang, I couldn't, you say your first and last name in the business and I catch like two of the five words and like terrible, like I am not your ideal employee. And I used to be, that was my shine. Like I was, I was the gal that was a snot nosed college student that was working at the hospital. I got a performance review. I'm like, what do you mean I got all fours? I do all these fives. And the HR gal, me being naive, was like, um, no, no one gets fives. <laughs> like she had to bring me down a couple notches. And I was just always this overachiever. So like these things I'm very used to doing, I couldn't do. Um, and I still have issues. Like doing the 941 quarterly taxes. My mom has to proofread all my work because I'll mess up. And there was one day I had like this $900 mistake. I'm like, where, or $300 mistake. I'm like, what? I could not figure it out. I kept calculating, recalculating, recalculating. I give it to my mom. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Something's wrong, $300, I'll figure it out. She calls me, she's like, do this again. I'm like, okay, so I punch it in the cat. She's like, no, no, put it in the calculator. I did, read it to me, I did. She's like, is that a six or a nine? And I looked at it again and I kept saying nine, but it was a six. And just, usually I don't flip numbers, but I continually flipped the same number seven to eight times. And I was so furious and upset. My neurologist heard about that, by the way, because I'm like, how? I mean, all the other numbers I was fine with, but that one calculation I kept, and I was so upset and mad and my mom was very good, but it's just like, how do you expect me to do certain things when I can't even do the sometimes the basic things? And I'm I'm used to working at a very high level and I had to like let it go. And it was very well, tough. 
Yeah, and it sounds like you were in accounting. Oh, no, that's for my parents. Uh, before I was a pharmacist. Oh, okay. No, I was a okay. pharmacist. I was a, I was a pharmacy manager. I had over 50 facilities in 10 different states that I took care of. I was licensed in five states. And well, I found I, out I, I wasn't doing good anymore and I had to say goodbye. I had, I let my, I let my license lapse in 2019, my last license. Because after three and a half years of spinning my wheels and doing everything I could possibly do, I realized there were some things I was not going to get back. And as a health yeah. professional, I was more of a threat. Like I would be harmful to my patients. And I said, I had to let it go. And anyone in the, not in the health field is like, why would you do that? The health people are like, yeah, that was a good call. But I had to let it go. And that let me stop spinning my wheels in place and move forward. But man, I spent a long time in that education. I still have those student loans, you know, but I had to just let it go. I had to and let it go, speaking, it took a long time. Speaking of letting things go, it's about quarter after 10 here. Oh, wow. um, in the, where I'm in Michigan, I don't wanna be a party pooper, but every party needs a pooper. And okay. I think I'm probably gonna turn in pretty soon. But before I did, I just wanted to give Robert one quick piece of dating advice okay. for that girlfriend of yours. Pick a day of the week like one day of the week that you commit to her and then you won't forget. Just say, babe, we're doing two, Taco Tuesday or we're going out on Tuesday and that's her, like dedicate it to her and then you won't forget, hopefully. Okay. You know, just like repetition and, yeah. and you know, so. But if you got yeah. yourself a good girl, y'all, it'll help you. <laughs> I'll be afraid to let her tune into this. Oh yeah, I've invited her. I got to meet her once. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I think she get something out of this group too. Yeah, absolutely. But again, I just want to do my public service announcement that our next meeting is Tuesday, June twenty second, and Dan will be here, and he's a super good party guy too. So I'm going to sign off, and I know, Kim, you know how to close everything up. So Yeah, I'll close it up when we're ready to go. It's good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Have a good night. If I can figure out how to do this. Bye-bye. Bye. I had it. It was doing good. Hey, Kim. Yeah. You want me to kick you out, Jen? <laughs> yes, please. If you okay, could do that. My fingers were, like, not doing it. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> All right, I kicked her out, guys. <laughs> what, what were you if saying? It's, if it's uh, okay, I was just gonna say, if it's okay, next meeting, I do plan on returning because this has been very therapeutic for me, and I appreciate it, guys. I really do. Um, Let me send you my cell phone number here. Okay, so I'll reach I, out to you. Okay, what I want to do. I'm gonna see if I can get my husband to come in next time so he can hear that it's not just me. <laughs> oh, know? this is recorded by the way, Christy. So this will actually be posted um, oh, okay. on our YouTube website. Um, we'll give your email address to Rick and then they'll send you a link so you'll know when it's, and I can send that over to you too when I get the link that it's posted. So he can watch this one, he can watch previous. Um, yeah. Means. That's what uh, like got me to come this week because the last one I watched was I think the 25th, May 25th. Oh, yeah. That was the last one. Yeah. So I watched that one on YouTube and I was like, oh, yeah, they would be a good group to speak with. And so I was like, I'll, I'll just make sure I go for the next one. So I looked on the website when the next which is today. And uh, she's like, are you going to do it today? And I was like, yeah. And he, I was like, just remind me because, you know, I get carried away. And uh, and then I missed stuff. And he's like, okay. And he, it came up at 545. He's like, are you going to go get on? <laughs> I'm like, oh, and then yes. just put it in your calendar as a repeating thing on the second and fourth Tuesday of the month we meet. 
because I used to think it was every other week. And then when you get that fifth Tuesday, that threw me off. So second and fourth Tuesday, even. We meet on even, not the odds. We're not odd or evens, guys. Evens. (laughs) (laughs) And I saw that it was uh, starting at 8 p.m. I thought in my brain it's I had 8 p.m. Eastern. So, so it's like, 7.30, sorry, 6.30 your time, mountain time. Right. And I was it like, took, it, took Matt, it took Robert a couple times before he figured no. it out. He was. I ended up with <laughs> the prostate cancer group. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes if you come too early, the prostate group is, is running over. So if you show up and there's like a massive amount of males in the room, just go ahead and exit. It's cool. They're just, <laughs> I they're just running the over time. and it's kind of like. <laughs> scary to show up and suddenly there's all these guys in sentence of zoom you like you think they're staring at you <laughs> so just guys. Be aware. sometimes they run a little over and so i'll just come back in another five or ten minutes so yeah so i was like i went to the the website to connect to the meeting and i was reading the description i was like where did i get six or eight it says eight thirty so it would be 6.30 my time. I was like, good, I have a half hour to get this figured out. No, I still showed up like 15 minutes late because I couldn't get the dang camera to work. And it, it was just a nightmare. I, Christy, I've had I, so many problems with time, with MS, especially this past year. Like I blew off a physical with my doctor. I like would like look up for a physical therapy time and then less than three hours later, I just try to move it in my brain. Like these are things I met with the, the judge about all these issues that I was having with time. I just can't keep it straight. And even if I put it in my phone, if I don't put it in right, it doesn't always work. So. Yeah, you put it PM instead of AM or- Wrong or day, wrong month. Day or like- Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't, yeah. you didn't think, okay. Robert's like, you guys are all a bunch of hot messes. <laughs> I was the same exact way. I, I have to put it in my phone or else I forget it. It's yeah. it's horrible. Yeah. I'm but glad you know, your Miss Dose went well. Their second dose. Yes, I was super I'm so excited. excited. That, he was awesome. really scared, Christy, because he started tech. So he's a he's a newbie. You just got diagnosed when, Robert? It was a couple uh, months ago. Mar- Mar- beginning of March. So beginning of March. So he started this brand new drug, Tech for Dara. And he had immediately had this emer- allergic reaction, had to go to the ER. And so he was like terrified about getting Ocrevus. And we're like, just just hold on. Just it's okay. You're having IV. They keep it in you for an hour. So if you have an allergic reaction, they'll put something. And so I'm so glad that you're doing better because you were just like, yeah. I'm so I, scared after that allergic I reaction. I had anxiety attacks before just mm. because I didn't want to end up back in the hospital. And uh, yeah, my anxiety was through the rough. So to go and have the second injection, everything goes smooth, uh, or infusion, I should say, um, was was a blessing. It really was. That, that's awesome. That's really awesome, and that's that's hopeful for me. So I appreciate you sharing um, your. Did they tell you to? I don't know because I missed the 20 minutes or something when I was rescuing my husband on his bike ride. Um, that. <laughs> Hannah and Elizabeth are actually spokespeople for Ocrevus. Did you know that? If you see the brochures, you'll see them. Yeah, you'll recognize their oh, really? looks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, only, the only like advertising that we see here in Colorado is maybe I'm just not paying attention, or you know, I, I'm not familiar too much with either one of you, but it's a commercial. And they say it two times a year, you know, and it's like, it's probably like a 30 second commercial. And that's the only like advertising as far as Ocrevus is here in Colorado. And I'm like, okay, twice a year. <laughs> that, that when I first saw that, I was like, that's only twice a year. That really perked my ears. Did they like, tell you the price of it? No. You don't want to know. Do you want to know, or do you want the sticker shock later? I'll take the back. Delinea for a 30-day supply was just shy of 10,000. Right. Yeah. I remember that about Delinea because I, I was on it for about three months. 
and I just remember looking at my bill every single time I got the oh not the not the bill the they give you a receipt anyway and yeah the statement thank you um and just thinking wow 30 days for seven thousand dollars was what it was for me at the time Mm -hmm. I I had it I had it denied one month. Like, why is my thing not getting refilled? So I call the insurance and they're like, oh, well, it requires a prioritization. I'm like, no, prioritization is, is good. Like, well, just go to your local pharmacy and get a few. And I'm like, well, first of all, my local pharmacy isn't going to have it. <laughs> of all, these are like 300 bucks a pop and I'm not going to pay for those out of my pocket. And third of all, no pharmacist in the right mind is going to break a bottle of this because it will expire on the shelf. And so they just kept nine phone calls later over the span of a couple days finally got to someone and they're like um oh so the drug went up from seven thousand to eight thousand dollars a month it was a hard limit to seven thousand so we had we have to get it approved eight and then it's covered so that was a problem but they just kept trying to like push me like oh no it's just a a prior no 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 prioritization's good no no you can't you just can't just shrug me off like that well i just I just got noticed because my all of my name brands drugs. Uh, I'm with United Healthcare, and if there is a generic, they will straight throw you on generic. And the thing is, is when you're on name brands, they have like a lot of copay assistance and stuff like that. That really helps. I, I never pay for my copay on Jelenia because Novartis paid my copay every month. But that's a little different because that is just, that's a a specialized, really expensive drug. If you're just talking about generics and brand on like normal medications that aren't thousands of dollars, it's a little different, but yeah. Well, my, I just my thought, well, just put in for financial assistance for me. So they gave me all the financial assistance papers right then and there. And Ocrevus mailed me a Visa debit card. Um, and then they just swiped the numbers before the payments. And they gave me, so it was a $2,000 copay on my part. But the debit card they gave me was $1,995. So it's $5 out of pocket for the, uh, for the infusions. Well, my, I just got word from my neurologist. They're coming out with a generic gelinia. So a lot of people are going to lose their copay assistance because the insurance companies are going to force people to go to the generic. Um, so that is about to happen. You know, so. Good meeting you, Christy. Going to jump off and eat dinner. So. Yes, bye. I'll try to I'll try to hop on next time, but next time is my Ocrevus infusion day, so we'll see how I'm feeling that day. See how loopy you are that day when you come yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. That'd be fun to see that. I want to well, see you hyped up on Salyamed. You're like, woohoo! How's it going? <laughs> well, I'll let you guys know my first infusion went because I'll have had it by the time the next. That's right. So, I, I have my first infusion on the 16th, and then the That's next right. meeting. Is, um, yeah. So let us 20. know. Okay. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, I'm gonna stop recording here, guys. Oh. <laughs>